Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I make my framed wood signs from start to finish. So I'm talking the exact wood I use, how I cut the wood, the machines I use, how to sand and stain, how I center my wood signs, and even up to the hangers that I use. Um, it's going to be basically the ultimate video, everything that you will need to know with making wood signs. And I know that what works for me might not work for you, might not work for everyone, but maybe it'll give you some ideas and um, kind of lead you to the way and the methods that work for you. So I'm super excited about this video. Um, I have been wanting to make it for a while, but I've been playing around with methods over the last, I'd say, year, trying to find exact perfect method for me and my business. And like I said, I think I nailed it down and figured out what works for me. So if you guys are interested in this video, let's go ahead and I will take you outside and we will get everything started. I have a sign I'm wanting to make for my um, new craft room and um, we're going to be cutting that sign today. So let's go ahead and go outside. Okay, so I'm outside and this is the setup that I kind of have going on right now until I get a bigger woodworking shop built, which I'll be doing hopefully in the near future. But um, my husband and I actually found this cart. It's a utility cart at Harbor Freight and it had nothing but it's just like an, an industrial plastic kind of thing and it didn't have a top or a bottom and so we put Advantech, which is like a, a flooring on both pieces, which is a really good hard like a plywood to use and put on top the miter saw and then down here is the planer and all we have to do is roll it outside. So that's really nice. And um, my husband has it to where all we have to do is just plug it in over here. But that's what I use for cutting my wood. And um, over here, I just have saw horses, as you can see. And that's what I put my plywood on to cut. So that's what I use to at least put the things I need on. And the things that you need to cut your wood is um, a miter saw. And this is just a DeWalt. I'll ask my husband when he comes back over here the exact kind it is. I think it's the DW775 or 755 or something like that. Um, and it comes, it's just the blade that it came with. And so that's what I use to cut the wood with. So you'll just need a miter saw. And you don't need a planer. A planer is just if you want to make your wood smoother to make it easier to sand. So that's what I use. And then I obviously use a circular saw to cut my plywood with. You can do this with a table saw, a circular saw, whatever you feel comfortable using. And on here, this is something new that I'm trying out. It's the Craig Rip Cut. And it makes it to where you just line this part up on the end of your wood and it cuts straight for you. So you just line it up with whatever your measurement is and it cuts straight. So this is actually new and I'm excited to try it out. But here's just a circular saw. I just have a battery powered circular saw. That's what I use to cut my plywood. And then the materials materials you need, you'll start off first using a just regular piece of plywood. I use birch and this right here is blonde wood plywood from Lowe's. So um, I'll put them up on the screen exactly what I use, but this is the wood that I use and I use half inch. So I think half inch is a good width to use because it's not too thin, not too thick. The thin wood, I get a lot of questions if the thin wood's better and it's actually not because when you're putting your frame in the side, it can cause the nail to kind of pop up through the bottom or the top. So it's better to use this half inch, I've found. Um, it's not too heavy, not too light.
guys, once I come inside, the next thing I'll do, I got my wood here and I'll get a paper towel and I will just wipe off all the excess. Um, if there's any sawdust or anything like that, just to make sure that it is a nice, clean, smooth surface for the paint. So this is usually what I do when I first come in. And um, I also blow it off with my leaf blower, but this is just kind of a second, just make sure all the particles are off. Um, which it feels good. All right, and then next, what I'll use, as you can see, this is the paint that I use for the background of my framed wood signs. It's just Valspar 2000 in high tide white, and then I get semi-gloss. And the reason you want to do semi-gloss is more of a durable surface um, for your wood signs. And I found that flat paint a lot of times will lift the paint back up. So I like semi-gloss, um, that's what I use. And then I'll just use some foam rollers. And the reason I like foam rollers better is it gives more of a smooth surface rather than the paint brushes. It won't leave lines or anything like that. So I'll just use foam rollers. These are from Harbor Freight. You can get them anywhere as long as they're the size you want. And I like the four inch size and just a holder for your roller. Okay, once I do the first coat, I will let it sit for a good maybe 15 minutes or so, and then I'll do the second coat. So I will be right back when that is a little bit drier. Okay, now the first coat is kind of set a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the second coat. Okay, I usually won't do a third coat. Sometimes I will. Um, in this instant, I don't really need to. So usually now I will let this dry for a good several hours and um, then it's ready to have the stencil. So now I'm gonna go ahead and head onto my computer and design the stencil for this wood sign. Okay, so I have Silhouette Studio pulled up and it defaulted me to the 12 by 12 mat option. But for this particular stencil, I am going to be cutting a 36 inches long by 12 inches tall. So I will not be using the mat option. And I'm actually going to use my new Cameo 4 Pro for this stencil. But you can cut larger stencils with your normal Cameos. Just make sure you do when you're selecting your cutting mat, you just go to none. And that is what I'm gonna be doing for this. So I'm gonna be cutting my Pro and I'm gonna have no mat selected. And then my media size is gonna be, oops, I did not mean to click that. My media, media size is gonna be custom and I'm going to change this to 24 inches width. by 40 inches okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and create my stencil and for this sign I'm gonna go really basic and really simple with it I'm just going to type the word create so now I just need to pick my font and I'm going to select it go up here and I've already picked out the font that I want for this it's called Goldie Rainbow I got it on font bundles so next thing you're gonna to want to do is select your word, right click, ungroup, and then I'm gonna right click again and weld. So now all of my letters are welded together so when it cuts, everything is going to be cut together and not be chopped into different letters, if that makes sense. So next I'm gonna to want to go ahead and change the sizing. So up here at the top, I know that my max can be 36. So I'm gonna do probably 35 by maybe 11 and a half. So, so it looks like 30 is the width, but I can go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so this stencil is basically ready to be cut and now I select my word and I'm gonna go over here to this little panel over here and rotate it. And I'm going to go ahead now and send this over to my silhouette.
Okay, so my stencil is ready. It has transfer tape on the top and it is ready to be peeled and applied to my wood sign. So the next thing that you'll need is, especially if you have a really large sign, you're gonna want to do something called the hinge method. So this, you will need some kind of tape and the best kind is either masking tape, painter's tape, something like that. I'll make it a little bit thicker. And then you will need um, a type of measuring device. I love these acly clear acrylic rulers. Um, I got mine at Walmart, but you can get it at Amazon. I'll link it down below. But um, this thing is something you're definitely gonna want if you do vinyl decals or wood signs. So that's what I'll do next. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and trim this to size and then we'll get it centered up on our sign. Okay, so I've got it trimmed to size and I didn't know, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I had it to where I wanted the E to kind of go beyond the sign. Um, I don't know, in my mind, I think it'll look good, but we'll find out. So um, now I'm gonna measure it and get it exactly centered on my sign and then we're gonna tape it. So it's centered how I want it. Now I'm gonna take my tape. Now I'm gonna take my tape and I'm going to put it right in the center of my sign. And then I'm just gonna tape it down like this. Okay, so now you're left with two sides, like this. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel back the first half, and then we're gonna cut that off. Okay, so as you can see, the tape stops it from going any further. So you just take your scissors, and cut that half off. Make sure your sign is free of any dust or anything like that. And then you're slowly going to adhere this to your sign using your um, any kind of hard material like your squeegee or your brayer or whatever you have. And then I just slowly apply this. Once you do that, you're gonna take your tape off. Once your tape's off, you're going to take off the next side. And then you're gonna slowly apply this down. One of the keys to ensuring that you don't have any bleeding with your sign is to just keep adhering this so there's, so there's no bubbles, there's no creases or anything like that. Make sure your stencil is applied extremely well to your sign. So that is definitely one of the most important things. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is just peel off your transfer tape. And then usually after this, I'll just kind of inspect it and see if there are any pieces of stencil sticking up or anything like that. So I'll know to kind of fix that. And then I'll take that tape again and I will tape all of the edges that are showing because this will be handy for your spray paint.
All right, and then the last step of this before we go and spray paint is paint your base paint. So the same paint that we used for the background, I'm gonna paint, roll that on top of our stencil. When you're doing this, it's ensuring that any paint that you're spraying on top of your stencil, it doesn't have time or it's not able to bleed because it is caught by your base paint. So when I started doing this, I realized that that is what is basically the key to no bleeding and that helps for sure. So um, don't ever skip this step, at least from my experience, I never skip this step. All you need is one coat for that and then we're gonna let it dry for about an hour and then when that's dry we'll go outside and spray paint. Now that that's all spray painted, we're gonna let it dry in the garage since it's not too, too cold today. Um, I'm gonna let it dry for about, I don't know, maybe two hours, one to two hours, something like that, and then it'll be good to go. Now, if it's really cold outside, you need to take it inside to cure completely just because I've noticed spray paint, if it's extremely cold, it will not peel properly. So it's about 50 degrees today, so it's probably okay to keep outside to cure. But normally if it's colder than 50, I will take it inside to cure. So just a little tip there. Okay, it's been a couple hours now and it is time to peel the sign. So the thing I love about this spray paint is the results are almost flawless every single time. So. I really love this method. I will go ahead and if I can get this tape off here. Okay, so as y'all can see, this is how it turned out. Almost flawless results. Like I said, I love the spray paint method. So now all we have to do is go frame our signs and I'll go ahead and show you guys the other sign that I spray painted today. This one is just a 12 by 24 and it just says Simply Sally on it. So yet again, as you can see, it had pretty great results with the smaller font as well. So now let's go ahead and head on outside and I'll show you guys how I frame these signs. Okay, so when I'm ready to frame my signs, I have a little setup out in my garage. It's just a regular little table, and I put something firm on it, like a piece of plywood or whatever you wanna use. Um, the table works just fine. Um, you'll need one of these brad nailers for this project. I use an 18 gauge brad nailer, and this is a very cheap one from Harbor Freight. I think it's like $20 or something like that. It might be a little bit more, but you can use a coupon. Um, that is all you need along with some 18 gauge nails. I like the DeWalt brand and I use one and a half inch in length. And then you will want to have something like this handy. I think these are called side cutters, angled side cutters. Um, if your nail pops through your wood, you're gonna wanna have something quick that you can um, snip that nail off if you need to re, you know, re-nail your project or anything like that. I highly recommend getting one of these just in case. It doesn't happen all the time, but you know, just in case. And then, and another thing you'll need is one of these air compressors. You can get them anywhere. I got this one at Harbor Freight. It has lasted me plenty of years. Um, it's just a small air compressor. You don't really need anything fancy. Um, and then make sure it comes with, or you buy an air hose to go with that. And this connects to your brad nailer. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. But those are the things that I use to frame my signs. 
Okay, I'm just gonna load my nail gun up, make sure that it has nails and it does not. So, all you have to do is stick them inside of your nail gun like this, and I don't need too many. I might go ahead and add a little bit more. Okay, to connect your air hose, you just need to um, attach the end of it to your gun, like that. Then I usually take my frame and I will just match it up and see what side goes where. Because sometimes your wood can be off slightly when you're measuring everything. So you wanna make sure you have it lined up on the side that it was cut to be, which it is. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the bottom and you always wanna start with the side when you're framing um, that is flush. So this side, as you can see on this corner over here is flush and you're gonna wanna add your side pieces last. Cause if you add that first, it'll be too big and then your bottom pieces won't go on. So. We'll start with this. Framing the sign is really easy. Um, you just wanna start by making sure that your two sides are flush on both sides of your sign. Make sure that you have the right side that you want to be facing up, up. So I do, I'm gonna flip this this way. Okay. Okay, so when you're ready to frame your sign, as you can see, the lip of this is like a certain dimension. And when a lot of people have asked me when you're framing these signs, how do you know where to put this? Are you gonna go too low, too high? I have always used this as a guide, so I will set it exactly on the tip of my plywood or the tip of your table, whatever you're using. Hold it down, and then it goes in just like that. And then your nail is in. And then I'm gonna do, I always do one in the middle. One on this side, a little bit further over. And then I will go on the other side. Make sure it's flush. Okay. And then I'll add a couple more in between until I feel like it's good for the dimension of the sign. Okay, so that side is done, and as you can see on the bottom, it's flush with the bottom, you can't see that, but it's flush with the bottom of the sign, and there are no nails popped through or anything like that. So now I'm gonna move on to the top. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the very sides of the sign, so I just flip it around. Let me get my wood. Okay. Okay, you're just gonna want to make sure it's flush with the sides. Make sure you have it right in the middle. One in the middle, and I usually do one on the side. And then you're gonna always wanna make sure you nail your corners in. So I do one at the very top, just make sure you're in the center.
Okay, y'all, so excuse the way I look. It is late at night now, so I'm tired. But I wanted to talk to you guys about the hangers I use for wood signs. I don't sell anything too big, so I would recommend if you're gonna sell really large signs, you use the hanging wire for the ones that are very heavy. But um, I like to use these sawtooth hangers and I get them from Amazon. I'll link them down below the exact ones that I use. But um, they look like, let's see. Let's see if I can get it to, to the show. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> Um, that's what they look like. I use these and they come with little tiny screws. So you're going to need a screwdriver and you're gonna need your handy dandy acrylic ruler for this. And if you do it this way, it's pretty sure to be straight. Um, so I'll just flip my sign around. I get a lot of questions on what I do to the back of my signs. I don't do anything to them. They're literally just plain on the back and nobody has ever complained. So that's how I have the back of my signs. What I'll do is I will measure from the side and I'll use my acrylic ruler and kind of, let me get my pencil. Okay, for the 12 by 24 signs, this part's a little bit easier because um, this is an exact, exactly 24 inches long. But for the larger ones, I will usually measure up a certain distance and mark and then measure over a certain distance and mark and this helps you get it straight. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and measure and get it how you want. Now, depending on what size your sign is will be where you put your um, marks. So for instance, this one, I'm gonna go over about two inches from the side and maybe one inch down from the top of the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my hangers now. And it's done after that. So my hangers are on, just two sawtooth hangers because this sign isn't overly large. But if I'm ever making a sign, like I said, that's a lot bigger, I will put hanging wire. And um, you just attach two bolts on the end or two um, hangers on the end and then add your hanging wire to that. And that's a whole nother video. I'll have to show you guys how to do that. But this is what I do for pretty much all of the signs that I sell and I will always include them with my frame signs and if a customer does not want them, they let me know and I don't include them. So that is what I use for these. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys up close how the sign turned out. And this is why I love the spray paint method. As you can see, this is pretty much as crisp as it is gonna get. And I have tried this, the spray paint method, for several months now I've been working with this and I have had no issues with it even in my very small signs with my very little lettering. No problems with it at all. As you can see it comes out very smooth and crisp and I have had no issues. I don't apply anything to the spray paint. Just paint. Um, it's just the paint on here and then I do apply polycrylic on my frame just to kind of keep the frame looking nice. but. That's the results we got here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hang up my sign and show y'all how it looks. Okay, so I got it hung up. As you can see, it took a lot of trial and error trying to get it in this awkward space up here because it was so tall and I had to maneuver around tables and everything, but I made it work. So guys, I hope that y'all enjoyed this. I wanted to do this video again because my method has changed from what I did in the previous farmhouse frame sign video. I love the spray paint method. I've been using it for several months now and I've done signs with very small lettering and I've done signs with very large lettering and just tested it out and I love it. And I think that it's something that I will be continuing to do. And you know, as a business, you're gonna find things as you grow that work for you and maybe they don't work for everyone and that's totally okay. So I know a lot of the people on my Facebook group and a lot of you guys that watch me have um, expressed that you love the spray paint method too. So I, like I said, I've had no issues with it. I absolutely love it. And a couple questions I get is, 
I'm using the spray paint method, but why is my paint peeling? And I'm getting a lot of that right now, and it is because usually due to the cold weather. So if you are spray painting in extremely cold temperatures, that can cause the paint to, I guess, cure a little bit slower or it will not cure properly. And the way to fix that is, I guess, getting a small heater that you can keep in the room that your sign is curing just so that way it's not super cold. Or as soon as you're done spraying, if you have the space, take it inside and let it dry. And then as soon as that's dry, in a well-ventilated room, obviously, peel it. And then once it peels, the smell goes away very, very quickly. So that's what I recommend doing to prevent the peeling, but I haven't had any issues with it since I've started just moving it inside on cold days to cure. And then I love the background paint. Like I said that I was using the Valspar 2000 and semi-gloss. A lot of people have problems with sometimes the background paint peeling up with your stencil, and that is usually due to the type of paint. So just play around with the paints and see what works for you. And um, I love the semi-gloss because I think it's just more durable and it's kind of like wall paint you know we have this flat paint painted all over our house because it's construction paint and it is terrible flat paint is awful it peels off with everything so i highly recommend if you're going to do some kind of background paint use semi-gloss or anything above the flat because the flat paint will probably peel just as wall paint will <laughs> so that's what i recommend for these signs when it comes to paint and the stain, I would obviously recommend using any Men Wax or Varathane. Those are my favorite stains. I haven't had any problems with those. And then if you want just an extra layer of protection, put the polycrylic on it. That is always a good way to be. And just to reiterate, main problems with bleeding are usually due to not sanding enough, the type of paint, um, and then the temperature, usually cure temperature. So it's all kind of like a little science experiment, just figuring out what works for you in your business. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and seeing my methods and what I do for my wood signs. And I know that my method has changed a little bit from my previous video, but um, I just kind of wanted to keep you guys in the loop of what I'm doing right now and what's working so well. And like I mentioned, it's working for the tiny signs with little lettering and then it's working for these larger signs as well. So love the spray paint so much and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if you try this method out too and if it works for you, I'd love to hear it. Y'all stay tuned for my off my craft room tour coming soon. I'm finally getting the things hung up and the little things here and there that I wanted to set up before I showed you guys. And I know it took forever, but I'm finally getting done. So hope that y'all enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it if you did and subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification to keep in tune whenever I post a video or go live so you guys can join in on that. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.